Hey guys, Bondo here. We have a new project today. We are gonna be starting. We're gonna be building a garage foundation over here. We did. Morning. We did this driveway last year. Probably seen the video. But we're coming over here and we gotta take a bunch of trees down. And I worked over here before and it was all sand, so. Uh, it wouldn't hurt, yeah. I would get them out of the way, just in case. So we gotta take these trees down. Yeah, good question. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Off to the side of the driveway, maybe. I'd rather have them out of the way, just in case. So all these trees that are X, we gotta cut down, basically. Got a bunch of trees to remove, so the garage is going over in here. So we got the mini excavator here. We're gonna knock these trees down, push them over, dig up the stumps, and then we're gonna put a um, a stem wall foundation in here out of eight inch block and pour a floor and all that good stuff. So stay tuned. down. Loading these uh, logs right on my trailer. I burn firewood at the house, so this guy doesn't burn firewood. He doesn't want the trees, so we're gonna take them to my house and cut them up into firewood. That's what I'm doing here. I could get the trailer a little closer, but I don't want to drop a tree on it. So we got we're getting all the small trees out of the way first. And then uh, I got my buddy coming over. It's going to drop these bigger trees. I feel a little more comfortable with him doing it. On those big ones. There's a dead ash tree or a dead oak tree there that I don't like the looks of. So he's 
gonna bring some wedges and a bigger chainsaw. I'm gonna have him drop them. So they'll be here in probably an hour or so. I'm just gonna get all these little ones out of the way. some logs here to land it on. Greg's gonna try to land it right where them limbs are. I'll probably break them limbs off. the trees down. They're loading up the trailer right now. There it is. He took the excavator from me. I said he wanted to play for a while. Dug up that big oak stump. That's right there. Got all the stumps dug. He's just gonna leave that tree like that. He wanted to cut these two leaners off of there. And we're gonna make about probably three or four trips with that trailer over to my house with the wood. Get rid of it and I'll bring the skitzer back. We'll level out the site and uh, it'll be it for today. Get this. this is the first load of trees here. Loading up number two. Oh! Real good. Right on camera. Right on camera. As soon as I took my camera, put the camera out, he did that. He ain't too smooth today, is he? Digging up the yard. It's about 5.30. And we're loading up our last load here. Everything's pretty cleaned up. This is over there piling up the last bit of sticks and crap. Craig's gonna load these up. Should be able to get those on there, I'm thinking. It's gonna be a good size load, but we'll get it on there. Yeah. All right, Greg. 
Greg's my hero today. You didn't kill nobody with them dropping those trees. Yeah, that was good. You did really good dropping trees. Went right where you wanted Not to puff you up or anything, get your head too swollen, but. Went right where you wanted it. Right where we wanted it. You got a little bit of uh, stuff on the driveway, but he did really, really good. That's what she looks like. We got our third load of logs and we're heading out of here. What time is it? Like 5.30, quarter to six? Six? Well, six o'clock. We started at nine. Tried to let it warm up. We're going to leave the excavator tomorrow. I'm going to bring the skidster. We're going to set some batter boards and stake this thing out. And Greg's out of here. Day, guys it's actually lighting up but you couldn't even see there a second ago but uh I guess the snow's supposed to let up I'm heading to the job I was gonna bring the skidster over to the job but I don't want to get it all covered in salt and snow and everything so I don't think we really need it I'm not sure if we're even gonna be able to work in this unless it lets up I wanted to dig that foundation Take the footers for the this garage that we're working on. We got all that wood out of there yesterday. Well, we'll see when we get there. There's the site. Looks a little different than it did yesterday. Oh, there's a squirrel running across there. Yeah, we'll have to plow the snow off before we start. Yep, it's still snowing. I plowed all this off. Planted it out a little bit with the excavator. Chris is over with the homework, figuring out where he wants his garage. It's 28 by 32, so it's going to be 28 this lot, this way, and 32 deep. The doors will be on this end down here where they are. That'll be the gable entry with the doors facing the driveway. So we're just figuring out what angle and everything he wants it at. We'll get it squared up. Hopefully it stops snowing so we can get this dug. All right, guys, I want to show you something. We uh, got our pins in, and that's where we want our wall. We got pins in for the wall, and we squared it up. Now we put these boards up. These are called batter boards, and we ran them four feet off our pin in both directions. And now what we're going to do is put some screws in the batter boards. So that our string line, we're going to run a string line right across where they are, where our wall wants to be. We're going to do it in every corner, and then the, the string line is going to crisscross like this. And then once we get that string line perfect how we want it, we're going to take the string line down, but we're going to leave the screws in the boards. So these batter boards stay there. And then when we dig our ditch, we'll be able to uh, get things square. We'll be able to put our string line back up, be able to stick a plumb bob down where the where the intersection of the string goes. And I'll show you all this later. But because we're gonna have to dig all this up and it's gonna be hard to square it once you get down in a ditch. You get down in a ditch, it's real hard to square a concrete block um, foundation. It's just a pain. With ICFs, you can actually lock a few corners together and up above ground and measure your diagonals. But with concrete blocks, you can't do that. So. Um, 
this is probably the best way to do that. So I just wanted to show you that. And I'll show you what it looks like when we get our string line up. And it's still snowing. <laughs> yeah. Okay guys, we got our string line up. That's how we did it. And we are going to measure all our marks from where the string axis, where it crosses. We're gonna check all our dimensions first and then we're gonna measure our diagonals across the diagonals. The diagonals should be the same dimension. So first thing we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna pull tight and get all our dimensions, our widths, 28 by 32, and then we'll check our diagonals. I think we're gonna call it a day, guys. It just keeps snowing. And I don't wanna dig this thing and get all the snow mixed with the dirt and stuff. So we got our batter boards all set. Our, our lines are all square. We measured our diagonals. Our diagonals are 43.6 on a 28 by 32 building. So everything's right where we want it. We're gonna leave our string right here and we're gonna hopefully pick up tomorrow because it this is heavy snow. It just keeps coming down. Crazy, crazy weather we're having. Today's the first day of spring, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that nice? It's been wicked weird weather and it's the first day of spring and it's gonna snow like this. So we're just gonna pack up and get the heck out of here. We'll be back tomorrow probably. We'll see what the weather does. But I'll have to plow this back off tomorrow. Okay guys, so we're back over here. Today is March 27th. We were over here the 19th and we got that snowstorm. So we uh, we backed out of here, let it, everything melt off. You can see there's still snow, but um, the site's looking a lot better. I didn't wanna dig it with all that snow and everything it just wasn't worth it so we're over here now i got the mini we're gonna get ripping here and get this thing dug out um and actually i can pour the footer tomorrow if we can get it ready today but we got a lot of work to do so they said they circle t could pour the footer tomorrow if uh i can get it ready like i said but i got a lot of work to do here digging it gotta go home get the footer forms and everything and uh, we'll see. I got to take these strings off. So that's how they work. I showed you that in the beginning. How we're going to do these strings. And we're going to take them out off the screws and leave the screws. And we can plumb bob down to the footer. That's how we do it. I'm going to get ripping here. Okay guys, it took us about two hours to get this dug. We got it all dug out nice and wide so we can work. I flattened out, put some good material in there, scraped out the organic stuff, flattened it out so that we don't have a big mound in the way. We are going to run to my house and grab some footer forms and see how we can do getting this thing formed up because we can pour it tomorrow if we can get the we can get it ready so i think we will i think we'll get it ready we got our batter boards i only bumped this one once so other than that i didn't hit any of them i bumped that sinking one right there the last one so like i said we'll head to the house grab the footer for them, some stakes we're gonna hook our strings back up and once we hook our strings back up we can plumb bob down to the um where our footer's got to be for our block wall and then we can even use those same strings to, uh, after we pour the footer, to put our marks for our concrete blocks. So that's how we do it. The object is not to hit those though. And I was doing really good to the end until I bumped this one right here. So we'll have to double check that, but that shouldn't move because I just pushed it back. And all I had to do was <laughs> shove it back forward that way. So it shouldn't affect this line going this way because I pushed it this way. All right, let's go get some planks, boys.
All right, guys, we got our uh, footers all framed up and we've got our string line back up. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a, I don't know if you know it, but a chalk line works good as a plumb bob too. You can hang it like this. Some of them even have a point on the bottom. This one don't, but we're gonna hang it off this cross down and we're gonna have six inches on both sides bigger than the wall itself because our footer is 20 inches concrete so it's 20 inches wide our block wall is eight inches like is a six inches on either side of the footing of the block wall so the block will be centered on the footing so i'll show you what this looks like so what we need is six inches bigger I don't on think that bad boy this is the easiest corner because it's the lowest <laughs> but you don't have to hang that plumb bob as high as you do up in the front I love it. Yeah. All right, do the same thing uh, wherever you want to go next. Do you want to put a stake right there real quick? Yeah. A couple stakes in this you're corner. Right put a couple in there, Chris. Who dug this, man? They did a pretty good job. It was a guy in the hole. That should be right. You know what I'm saying? If your other side's right, it is. Right on the money. I say it should be. I agree. I just wanted to check. <laughs> no, you always check always it. Always check it. Always check it. You want two stakes for that? Two stakes and a hammer. Yep. Two stakes. I got stakes right here. Oh, do you? Okay. I put them all around. I just spread them out. Good, good. A couple stakes in this corner. We'll jump up front. Get them two set. You guys said it couldn't be done. I think we're going to do it. You might get it. Doing good now. So by all means, if you get that form straight, which it ain't, kick the middle of that form out, just a scoacher. Yep, right in that neck of the woods. I say this way should be good. This way here is really gonna be close. It's gonna be real close. I'll get you a couple of steaks. We probably get a lot. You're just ahead of us, man. A couple here. Look at that twisted by the string and the chalk ball. Like it. Now the last corner should be good. Shouldn't be able to move the last corner. It should have. Should follow suit with the rest of the building and be good. It is much easier with batter boards. I've done it both ways. Yeah, with two four foot levels hanging out. I mean, these are kind of a pain in the ass to get up, but once they're up, you're going. Once they're up, exactly. Setting them up is the pain. I remember doing all that freaking most strip and all that walls at phoenix yeah you're within an eight inch <laughs> i think we're good that block's got six inches of play on both sides of it that's how we do it right there boys and girls Done. that's how we do it now we're just gonna measure off our outside 20 and 20 now that our outside board is exactly where we want it we're going concrete to concrete inside of lumber 20 inches there 20 inches here couple of stakes in the corner 22 you gotta slide her in a little <laughs> give, her a, give her a pull bud <laughs> now you went too much yeah but now i can pull it to me there you go double check the side because we right. okay guys this is where we're at we got Everything leveled up. We just used the laser. We didn't have to do much uh, moving of our boards because we graded it. Chris used the good come along to grade it. And it's all sand, so it was nice and level. When you dig your own stuff, it makes your job easy. So we just staked everything, put screws in, set that with the laser. Um, Mike went around and wired the rebar all together. Got a nice lap on that right here and now what we do is we hang the rebar off 
these spreader boards that we put in. Chris is starting to do that. We just use some regular steel wire. He hangs it off there like that. Just using this regular wire. And uh, he's gonna hang all that stuff off of there like that. And we bend it around the corners too. So it gets bent around the corners like that. And the footer, these spreader boards are four foot on center. I mean, you could put them closer if you wanted to, but we got a lot of stakes in here too. So between the stakes and the spreaders, it ain't gonna move. Say that again? Oh, I can show you. Yeah, show me what you're doing. So I have a coil thing that holds this so it clips All on your belt. belt. Like an so iron just, worker. Yeah. You're basically like an iron worker here. So. Oh, that's where I picked it up from. So Chris has got it looped around his hand. He grabs it with the pliers. Of course, I fumble it. Fumble it while you're on video and he twists it. Boom, boom, boom. Man, dude, that's slick. Okay. That's we always pre cut everything, but I like the way Chris is doing it. It's nice. Okay, Ron, here is the footer. It is 10 inches thick, 20 inches wide, two rebars around it, bent around the corners. And like I said, it's overkill from what it needs to be, but that's how we do things, you know that. That's what she looks like. Obviously, this back corner is gonna need to be built up with dirt. We're going to have, uh, this is an 8-inch block wall. Give me a buzz if you got any questions, buddy. We're going to pour it in the morning. Thanks. Nice talking to you today. Stop by if you got a chance tomorrow. Good morning, guys. We're back here. going to pour out this footer. We've got Circle T coming in with the conveyor truck. Chris is just backing in here. i got a present for him, actually, in the truck. I'm really weird because i actually fix things all our come alongs were broke so i actually welded them up i actually fixed the because we use these things every day so i knew chris wouldn't like red so I painted it blue for him <laughs> got a little paint on the handle but painted the end red but the other blue when he comes out i'll see what he says when i give him his blue come along <laughs> but I weld these ends on there. This is our aluminum, so you gotta use a MIG welder for aluminum. And I weld these triangles on here, this part here. It makes them a lot stronger. I got a present for you. Oh, it's And look, <laughs> it's only got a little red on it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and it's blue. <laughs> the handle's blue. You gotta wear the blue paint off the handle a little bit, the rubber handle. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Here comes a building inspector. Uh oh. <laughs> We're in trouble now. <laughs> That's all right. What's up, buddy? Good, good. You're famous now. <laughs> Smile for the camera. I didn't know how to. That's Mexico's building inspector. He's going to check out our work today. Tell me what I did wrong over here. Can't pour. Can't pour it. All right, guys. Mud's here. I was talking to the. I'm talking to the camera, man. Mud's here. I was talking to uh, Ron, the building inspector. So I missed our here comes the mud. But looks like they're training. Travis has got Robbie here training RJ. Training RJ, and uh, we're going to get this poured out. Shouldn't be too bad at all. I'll try to get some video footage for you guys. Chris, you're really good at running that trimmy. Uh, about a five. Our inspection went well. Ron liked our work because we're we did everything overkill here.
Well guys, that was a big half hour job. We got her done. RJ's up there, I was busting his shots. I said I wanted to yell at him today, but he didn't do anything wrong. He's in, he's in training with the conveyor. He's been driving for a couple years for Circle T, but he's uh, training on this conveyor truck because these are different. Travis is uh, training them. Well, that's a wrap, guys, for this one. We're gonna try to get some blocks today. Hey, you can wash my truck, too. It's pretty dirty. It really needs it. All that sloppy snow we got last week. I gotta wash my truck. Oh, it's looking pathetic. Look at the salt and stuff on it. I gotta get that done today. I got old Clifford at Lowe's getting some concrete blocks. That's what we're doing right now. They're gonna put them in here with a forklift. So I'll show you how that goes. And then we're gonna go over to the job and unload them. Got a skid on there. We're gonna try to set them up in here and then push them. I know we can get two on there. I'm gonna use the other skid to push them forward. I'll probably have to use a third skid to uh, push those two forward. That's the game plan, I think. Pallet number two. I'm gonna push that pilot in with this pallet. I think Clifford's got a strong tailgate. There you go. Yep. Pushed it just by pushing it. So close. <laughs> we need like another inch. <laughs> Getting back a little bit. Get an inch you got. It. Oh, you got it, buddy. Good job. Perfect. And close my tailgate. Yeah, definitely. I was thinking, what's the scenario to extend it? Oh, yeah. Alright, we got Kevin the Kubota here. Off the bogey. I don't know if you can pick them up and slide them back without the chain, you know. Try, yeah. You can just, yeah, I think he's good. You're gonna get right in there with that because you got clearance. Then we'll just have to pull the second pallet. Come a little further, Chris. Yeah, right there. Left me right there. Kevin will pick him right up. He doesn't care. So we gotta jump up in there and roll the chain around and we'll pull the pallet. We'll pull the pallet back. Get the second pallet. Set it on something. We just about got her. A little bit of a pain, but it could be easier if the tailgate was right off the truck. But... Two inches more, and he'll have her. There you go, you got her, bud. 
You showed up just in time. <laughs> Thank you. Got my last trip here. I got 30 bags of mortar. On Clifford. And they're gonna get two more cubes of blocks. And load them exactly the same way and then we are good. We'll be ready to rip tomorrow morning. Okay guys, I just got back with our last load of blocks in the mortar. Chris has got this looking really good. With the Yanmar and the Kevin the Kubota there. Got a bunch of it backfilled. It's supposed to get about down to about 32 tonight, temperature wise. So we're gonna leave the footer forms on there and we got it backfilled with the um, sandy dirt. So that'll keep that footer from uh, wanting to freeze or anything. And we poured it at eight o'clock this morning. So it's about four o'clock right now. So we're in pretty good shape. I like it. So tomorrow we'll be laying blocks. I will be here tomorrow. Hopefully we can get uh, get a lot of this done. Maybe it all done. Then we can backfill and uh, pour our floor. You ready to go, boy? <coughs> ready. Girl's ready. Let's go, bud. Let's go get in the truck. Hold on. Come on, we gotta get in the truck. Come on, crazy man. Come on. Come on, Earl. Come on, in the truck. We gotta go lay some blocks today. Come on, get in the truck, buddy. All right, Rob, get in the truck. Let's go. Come on, come on, get in there. Get in there, crazy man. Wait for dad. All right, guys, let's get over to the job. Oh, oh, slide over, mister. Little hogger. Here we are, guys, pulling into the job. Let's see if anybody's here. No. I told him 7.30. 7.12. We are uh, going to get these blocks in today, hopefully, Ro. You know what I'm saying, Bubber? Got to get everything set up, and then I am going to get the... Hey, settle down. I'm going to go get the... For the red dog, and I'm gonna get some sand and stone to make concrete so we can do the core fill, and then I'm gonna bring back the concrete mixer. I got the mortar mixer right now. I'll bring back the concrete mixer. Hey, bro. Hey, buddy. Let's do it. Okay, guys, so we, we never took our string lines down, so back on these string lines. We use them to set our footers. Obviously, you've seen that. Now I got this uh, old chalk line. And these are set up like a palm bob. They got a nice point on the bottom, and you can hang them right from your corner right down and put a mark on the footer, which will be six inches in both ways. And before we do that, we'll double check our, uh, our diagonals again because we can still get a tape measure across here and here and our diagonal should be the same it should be like i think 42 6 so i'm still waiting on the guys it's like 7 25 and nobody's here yet except me so i'll have to address that These guys can get here just a little bit earlier than when we start um so i can get set up and then i get like i said i gotta go grab some sand and stone for concrete for our core fill we can get started here. I spread the blocks around last night. We cleaned the footer, took the spreader boards off before we left. And uh, now we're gonna take, we're gonna pull these planks and set them up on this bank. That's where we'll put all our, uh, all our blocks up there so we can just stand in here and grab our blocks and lay them. And uh, these blocks, there's a corner. These are corner blocks. They got a flat part on them. That's what we use in the corners. So we got one pallet of them and then we got the ones without the flat area this pallet the rest of the pallets are just what called stretchers they don't have the flat ends that's how you get them at Lowe's sometimes some block plants have them mixed but Lowe's does not carry them mixed they carry the flat ones and then the stretcher ones 
So somebody's coming, I think. Nope, he just drove by. Still waiting on my guys here so I can get going. All right, guys, I got Clifford running. We're filling her up. I got diesel fuel here at the house. I gotta get Row out of the out of the Ford, get him into the into Clifford. And then we're gonna run and get some uh, of that stone and gravel. I got the guys over there. Mark's laying up a corner. Come on, buddy, get in the truck. Get in the dump truck. Come on, get in the dump truck. Get in the dump truck. Come on. No, not this truck. Come on, back here. Sorry, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get in this truck over here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Get in this truck. Come on. Get in this truck. Come here. Right here. Get in this truck. Right here. This one. Get up in here. Come on. Come on, in the clipper. Come on, get in. Get in. Get in, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. Now you stay. You stay, buddy. Dad's got to get the Portland loaded up. Stay, okay? All right, I'm going to get some Portland. I got these side boxes on here. So I can put a bunch of stuff in here. I'm going to put uh, some Portland, bags of Portland in there that I got in the shop. And uh, this toolbox has got two sides to it. So I could stuff some in this side too. I got some Portland. Um, and that's what we're gonna use to make our concrete. Gotta move some stuff around. Hey, a box of beer. Oh, it's empty. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> I got four bags of Portland and uh, two bags of uh, the Comproco foundation coat. Get us started anyway. She's still filling up. The Clifford, we're thirsty. Oh. Me and my little buddy Ro, my shotgun pilot, are gonna head right down to Circle T and grab us uh, a little sand and stone. I already called Big Robbie's work in the office today, and he said we could get some uh, some stone and some sand to make our concrete for our core fill. So that's what we're gonna do. We could go to the gravel pit and get it, but we're actually just gonna stop at the plant and get it. There's Joyce, she works in the office. All right, bro, we're gonna get some stick sand and some stone, right, buddy? Maybe uh, Uncle Dwight's here and you can say hi to him. This is the concrete plant, guys. I will link a video on how they make concrete right here at the plant. I'll link that to this video for you so you can check that out. That's a kind of a neat video. But stay tuned, I'm gonna grab my sand and stone and head back to the job. Okay guys, here's all their stone. We're gonna get the fine stone, the three eighths, because we're doing a core fill. And there's their sand over there. So that's the plant. Like I said, I'll link that video, but He's kind of, kind of tell, he wants me to tell him how much I need. So I'm just gonna, he's just gonna try to get some in the corner of his bucket. That's a huge loader. So it's gonna kind of get a little bit in there. We don't need a ton anyways. that right no Clifford and that's gonna make our concrete right there now we'll get some sand after that we got old Roe sitting there watching the whole ordeal rolling You can dump it all right in there. I don't think you got that much. I guess I got a couple piles of sand, so he's gonna grab some sand out of this bigger pile. A little easier to get in there. And here goes our sand. on top of the stone. The thing it ain't any 
wider his bucket, huh? Okay, I'm in the dump truck. That's what we got. That's perfect. Okay, Ro. We got our sand and stone. We're going to head to the job and get this dumped off and then go back to the house and grab my truck. Uh, Big Biscuit just called me, so I got to give him a buzz on my way over there. Hey, Ro. Ro. Rowan. We're almost there, Bob. We're almost there. Excited? You excited, buddy? Almost at the job. Got her sand and stone. I think he's a little bit excited to get there. You want to see the boys? You want to see the guys on the job? You want to see the guys on the job, bro? yesterday one of his uh snow markers that mistake i think we can slither through there though i think we can get through there buddy what do you think you gonna make it i think we can we don't hear a big crunch we're doing good there's biscuits truck biscuit overslept today we have gotta bust his chops a little bit there's his truck used to be my truck got it all set up for him. All right, I'm gonna figure out where we wanna dump this. guys i just dumped the load of uh stone and sand guys are getting everything stocked up good mark's got that lead up he's working on this front lead i'm gonna go get the regular truck get rid of the dump truck clifford and they're still gonna keep stocking up like i said we put a plank along there all the way around which we pulled out of here and that's how we stack our blocks up and then they don't get all uh sandy and dirty or if you're working in clay it's even worse but they snapped a line on the footer here everything's squared up how'd our elevations look perfect, perfect. perfect. nice it was perfect. who did the footer <laughs> nobody answered it i'll answer you we did it measured out square really perfect yeah we were uh Perfect. Looks good. All right, I'm gonna go home and get uh, the cement mixer, concrete mixer. I mean, what? Yeah, the top, the top block, just the top one. That's it. We're gonna. No, let's do the top two, just in case we change our mind on where the floor goes. <laughs> I, I think it's supposed to go on the fifth course, but we're we'll. Uh, that could be the two to be determined. Yeah, strike the top too, Jay, okay? I'll be back in a half an hour. Right, Ro? We gotta go get the other truck in the cement mixer. I keep calling it a cement mixer. It's not a cement mixer, because cement... Chris, just remind me. Cement is just one ingredient in concrete, so it's a concrete mixer. Cement is Portland, right, Ro? He just corrected me. I'll take that correction. Let's go, buddy. Let's go, Ro. All right, guys, it's 10 o'clock. I just finally got back here. 
Um, I had to go get some Portland and stuff. Had to get the, that's my new uh, concrete mixer that uh, I bought on Marketplace. And I'm gonna jump on this wall here. Mark's got three leads up and he's working on the last one. So we're in good shape. Everything's stocked up pretty decent here. So I'm gonna try to rip out some blocks on this wall, just get that laid in. And I'm gonna have to talk to the homeowner and get um, get a kind of a drawing of where he wants his doors and everything for this. So, but this is where we're at, 10 o'clock. Stay tuned. guys we're doing pretty good it's a little afternoon I knocked that wall out pretty fast had it in time-lapse Jason and Mark got the front wall up they're working on the other 32 foot wall we got some garage door openings here but we're gonna do that last I'm gonna jump in on that back wall I think but we got the skids to run we're gonna move these blocks because we're trying to do it by hand which just doesn't make any sense we got equipment sitting here so we are going to uh, move that right now Breaking off the joints, guys. We're gonna strike the top two courses, but you won't see the bottom one. The floor gets poured. You won't see anything below the floor. how we do it one thing we do guys is after you strike them off you take a brush like this and just brush the wall and it leaves a little bristle lines in it but then you go back and point it up again this just closes all the little holes and gets rid of those uh see how it looks right there and it just makes it look better and then when you're done with that you just take your uh Strike your tool and you go back over it real quick and that just gives it the last final touch I'll show you once we brushed it down with the brush grab your striker tool and just touch it up a little bit I call this pointing it just run it over there you don't want to push hard just kind of giving it that last nice look and go up on the bottom like this. Get your nice look to it. We didn't strike stuff down lower than this. You won't see it. The floor is going to be right down there anyways. And that's that. Finishing up here. The boys are core filling. We got our mortar or uh, mixer, concrete mixer. So we begin over there. So we're mixing it up, putting our anchor bolts in, and we got rebar going down in there too. We drill the holes into the footer, and then we stick the rebar down in there, and then we core fill it, and we put our anchor bolt in. And we're doing that every four feet, which is good for that. So. Everything's scraped up, touched up. So we're just gonna finish up this core fill and then we're gonna part the outside. That's how much mortar we have left. I guess I did all right figuring out how many we needed. 
biscuit making up some concrete. We got that stone and sand. That's how we're doing it. Portland sand and stone. We're doing uh, one bucket of Portland, two buckets of sand, two buckets of stone. That's how we're making our concrete today for our core foot. I just looked at the clock, guys. It's 2.30, so we... We crushed these blocks today. Um, Mike's cleaning out the mortar out of the mixer and we're gonna make our parge coat. I'll show you what we're gonna use for that. I've showed you guys before. It's called Comproco Foundation Coat. It's this good stuff over here. That's an old bag on top. This stuff right here, Foundation Coat by Comproco. That base waterproof coating, and we're just gonna do about the top two courses, course and a half actually, because everything else is buried and this is all sand, so there's no uh, need for waterproofing here. This, this site is super dry. If this was clay soils, we'd probably parge the whole thing, but this is gonna have sand dirt on both sides, right up to here. The sand dirt's gonna be all the way up to here, so nice and dry. No issues over here on this site, but certain soils here in New York, we would do it a little different. But we will just parge that about right to here. That's all you're gonna see. Okay, guys, we're out of here. It's 3:30. Started at 7:30. Loading up the smut mixer, concrete mixer. Man, I'll get that straight yet. Backfill's coming right up to about one block down, so we parged it a block and a half. That's what she looks like. We got some cleaning up to do. It's actually uh, Easter weekend. Today's Good Friday. So we got a um, big weekend plan. I'm going four-wheeler riding up north on the Tug Hill for the Snurt Run is what they call that. So I'm heading up there now. That's why we work so hard today to get it done. Come out really good. So obviously it needs to be backfilled next week. We'll backfill it and then we got a prop for our floor. Thanks for watching guys. Biscuit.